Greetings, 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 royal family. All right, it's Shaz, and I every week things heat up more and more. Keep up the great work. Let me tell you something. People like Destiny are people that I make a conscious effort to stay the hell away from, and I will get into why later on in the review. All right, so the episode opens up uh, with a little montage of what everyone is doing, and we land on the scene with MJ and Gigi. They take their sons on a pumpkin patch ride. How cute. Gigi said that, you know, she loved the aesthetics of her uh, welcoming party for her son Elijah. Uh, I didn't, Gigi. Uh, it was a tad bit offensive, but that was on the previous review. We're moving forward. All right. Um, even though, you know, it was a lot of drama that went down at Elijah's reveal party over at uh, Gigi's place or wherever it was, you know, she said that everything worked out good. You know, she wasn't feeling the drama and all this other stuff. So they're, they're talking about that. You know, um, she said that, you know, her friends acted like animals at her son's party and she didn't expect that. And I said to myself, Gigi, Miss Gigi, AKA Loch Nessa. G if you've been watching this show for a while, then you know that Loch Nessa has acted an ass at many parties and functions. Okay. I don't understand why she was acting like, you know, she just met her friends the Shahs get ghetto anywhere they see fit, okay? We've seen that for nine seasons now. Anyway, Gigi says that Reza needs to be uplifted. She's telling MJ this. You know, Reza needs to be uplifted. Gigi seems to think that Reza is harboring um, hurt emotions because of his childhood. Who is it, ma'am? You know, Gigi's telling everybody this season that they need to go see their counselor. They need to go see their therapist more than one to two times a week, yada, yada. She's supposed to be this pseudo voice of reason. Girl, please. I, I just want to know where all that understanding was um, when Reza was at your neck, Gigi, S writing fake letters, making fake phone calls, fake text messages, embarrassing you in front of everybody, having, wh what, your ex-husband show up at a party, and you were on stage, him and MJ were on stage embarrassing you. Where was all of that reasoning that he has childhood trauma and he needs to be uplifted? Tell Reza to go to church. Moving along, Miss Thing, a.k.a. Destiny. So we see her opening the door to Paulina, who brings a bottle of wine over for them to have girl time. OK, she wants to hang out and chit chat. Miss Paulina, you don't have like Paulina doesn't have her own friends. You know, she's really getting on my nerves right along with Destiny, okay? Destiny says that they've been friends for a while, and I want to know, like, were Destiny and um, Paulina friends, like, before Mike and Paulina started dating? I, I don't I don't know. I, I need clarification on this. I do, because then a lot of things would kind of make sense, but not really. Anyway, so Paulina, she is there spilling her guts to anyone who will listen, all right. She tells Destiny that, you know, she was trying to cover up for Mike because he's always texting girls. Um, she says it's hard to let go of Mike. I'm like, girl, why? How long have y'all been dating? And plus you have kids. Destiny and all her melodrama, you know, starts to act like she's a Yanla. And she's basically taking on the task of protecting Paulina, a.k.a. Miss Destiny Rose is inserting herself in other people's ish as she always does. Always putting herself in stuff. Then she ends up crying when she gets pulled further into the mess. <sighs> I need to take a break from, from, from Miss Destiny. So we shift gears to see Nima, the annoying. Um, and he sets up like a little Manny Petty section at his apartment with Mike. Like Nima, what? It's just too much. It's too much energy there. Um, <laughs> Nima says that Mike's feet need to be tended to. Go ahead. Can it to your man, Nima. I ain't mad. Can it to your man. You know, so apparently Mike's feet needed to be tended to so much so that Nima hired two nail techs to give them both pedicures in Nima's house. Moving along to Reza. So he's showing Gigi a house. You know, Reza, he's still working in real estate. And he says that he kind of keeps it 
you know, below the radar, keeps his business on the low, low, but he still does his thing. Uh, apparently the pandemic didn't affect him, uh, in the real estate department. He does commercial real estate. He has been since the beginning of the, of the show anyway. So he's showing Gigi a house for whatever reason, cause Gigi claims that she needs more space. So they sit down to talk about the mess that's going on, right? Reza, he starts explaining himself where no explanation was requested, right? I noticed that Gigi said something worth mentioning though in this, um, in this little sit down, she asked Reza, why is it that it's his job to out Mike, like put Mike's business on display whenever Mike is quote unquote off track. Now, I thought that was a good question, but then I said to myself, she's talking to Reza. Now I wonder if Reza is taking that as Gigi calling him some sort of savior Knowing Reza, he's probably thinking that, you know, his little schemes are working because Reza is very manipulative and he's going to do what needs to be done to get that scene um, and to get that Bravo check. And I'm not mad at it. All right. Now we shift gears to Miss Thing, Destiny, right? She gets a call from Paulina because there's supposed to be this Halloween party going on uh, hosted by Destiny. OK, very, you know, themed. Everybody has to dress up, yada, yada. So she gets a call from Paulina, who's basically regretting spilling all of her and Mike's business, right? Um, Destiny is setting up the party and, and, you know, she gets this phone call and she, she listening, she's listening to Paulina. She warns, she warns uh, Destiny, Paulina, she warns her not to put herself in the middle of her and Mike. Now, this is Paulina telling Destiny this. Don't put yourself in the middle, you know, don't get involved. In other words, keep your mouth shut because I know I done told you too much and I'm pretty sure you went back and told Reza everything and now they know Mike's business and then somebody's going to get mad and say something and Mike is going to know that I was talking to you or you and telling our business, basically in layman's term. Now, she's also concerned that Mike might, you know, retaliate if he finds out that she was telling people their business. I don't know if it's because I'm used to Mike's like shenanigans, but I'm really tired of Paulina. I was tired of Paulina um, in Palm Springs. Actually, I was tired of Paulina last season. Cause girl, you, you made MJ seem like she was so horrible when MJ tried to talk to you about Mike's controlling ways. You, you did the most, but anyway, or was it the season before? Might've been the season. Before. I don't know. Whatever, whatever season it was. Y'all know what I'm talking about. I'm tired of Paulina because it's like, why are you going around telling MJ and um, Destiny or whoever will listen, you know, what's going on with you and Mike? And you're not leaving him. That's the thing. Like, it's either take a dump or get off the pot. And I feel like now that I'm thinking back, Gigi was right to tell Paulina to leave her alone and leave her out of her and Mike's BS. Remember, Gigi was like, don't get in the middle of me and my pie and she hung up on her blocked her she don't want to hear it because it's like you whining in my ear and you ain't doing nothing about it and these are mike's friends like paulina where your friends at anyway mj and reza so they meet up for a little cosmetic procedure you know a little pokety poke a little nip nip here nothing major and it ends basically with mj telling reza about you know not seeing uh him not being able to see baby shams she wants reza she reveals to him that you know she really wants reza to meet him but tommy doesn't and that might change and it might not but for now she's gonna rock with her husband i'm glad she told him that because reza needs to understand that you're not in control of everything and anything when you had the opportunity to be there for mj you, you basically spit in her face. So now you got to suffer the consequences and MJ stick by your husband. I know you know Reza longer, but stick by your husband because Reza can, he basically goes with the win and he proved to you time and time again, he's not loyal to you. Y'all both have been at it. Stick by your husband. And I like the fact that MJ is respecting the fact that, you know, Tommy doesn't want that right now. You know, and she she gave him a false sense of hope saying that might change. But I don't think that's going to change anytime soon. Tommy, Tommy seems like a guy that has like a heart of gold. But while you have an active restraining order on him, I don't think he's going to let you be around his kid. I wouldn't. So, you know, Reza ended up crying, you know, and both of them now have an understanding um, of the situation. So, Reza, you're just basically going to have to be patient. It is what it is. If you see him, you see him. If you don't, you don't. But you know why now. So what? Moving along, party time. So Nima, remember, this is a costume party, a Halloween party. So Nima, he decides to dress up as MJ, all right? He's going, like, full throttle. Like, he was even able to get a couple of, you know, 
get an outfit out of MJ's uh, closet, courtesy of Tommy. He got the makeup, you know, the the glasses, the wig. <sighs> Nima girl, just <laughs> you in the U.S. You know, you could you could you could you could tiptoe on out. It's all right. You're not. You're not in another country. You're 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 in the U.S. You you could tiptoe right on out. That's your business. That's your time. But it is what it is. MJ and Reza they end up dressing as hippies. They claim it wasn't planned. Oh, just a kawinky dink, I guess. Right. Destiny, who is the hostess of the party, she's dressed up as like a, you know, a, a trendy, you know, sexy Beetlejuice. All right, whatever. Now Paulina is there. Mike is there. I think Mike was some sort of like SWAT team member. Paulina, she was a police officer. I don't know what the hell Adam was. Um, Paulina, you know, she's talking to London. She's mingling. No, London is the new girl, courtesy of MJ, right? And she's telling her that she thinks that it's hot for two women to be together and said that Mike would love that. And I'm just like, what? Mike, come get your girl. What are you What are you talking about, Paulina? What, what, is, what are you doing? Anyway, then she asked London if texting other girls, you know, would be considered cheating. London says, yes, absolutely. See, this is why Mike don't bring you nowhere. <laughs> Girl, what are you talking about? That was a joke, okay? Anyway, um, again, Paulina, she's really annoying me. You know, everyone knows. I feel like all of the shots, they know that Mike has cheated. You know, Mike's a cheater. That's that's a recurring theme. Um, and I feel like Paulina now knows because she's going through it, right? So I, what is the objective of Paulina telling everyone what Mike does when all these people have witnessed this for years? I just, like Paulina get a little liquor in her system and she turns into Mike's enemy. I don't, she is like the agent of chaos. And I'm not excusing any of Mike's behavior. Here's the thing though. If you are going to continue to be in a relationship with him, let that man cheat in peace. That's just my opinion. You either take a dump or get off the pot. But trying to, I don't know. You just an agent of chaos. I don't know. And isn't Paulina, ma'am, isn't Paulina still legally married? Girl, you need to cool your box off, honey. I don't know. I think she thinks that maybe shaming Mike in front of his friends will cause him to turn into the man that she wants. Good luck, girl. Good luck. So now we move on. Still at the party. It's time for all the drama, right? So um, Destiny, she gets everyone seated, you know, and she she's proposing a toast. And she want out of everybody, out of everybody, she wanted to change up the seating arrangements, right? So she announces to the whole table that she wanted Paulina to not sit next to Mike, which was weird. Out of everybody, you didn't say Reza, switch places with MJ, so you're not sitting next to Adam. Out of everybody, she picks out Paulina and suggests that Paulina sit somewhere else in front of everybody. Mike shut that down. Mike is like, nope, nope, she's not going anywhere. Like, I'm spending time. This is a weekend with my girlfriend, you know, because uh, Paulina has children. So. I think her and her um, husband, who she's not divorced from yet, I don't think, uh, her and her ex basically alternate weekends where they have the kids, right? So obviously this is a weekend that Paulina ain't got them children and Mike wants to sit next to his girl. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I see what, I see the storyline forming here and I see what uh, what uh, Destiny is trying to do. And she, she I said, here we go. You, you, you started this, you lit this match, destiny girl, you did. And good luck to you because I know who your puppet master is, <sighs> but that's weird though. Paulina, you're going to sit, we're going to do a little different. You could sit over here. Mike's like, no, I want to sit next to my girl. What are you talking about? Talking about. So anyway, so Paulina, she ends up getting up to go to the bathroom, right? Now just picture this. Paulina excuses herself to go to the bathroom. Destiny gets up right behind her. Are you okay? Are you okay? Are you okay? She's like, yeah, I'm all right. Then MJ follows behind, uh, behind her. So now Mike is sitting there looking like, okay, Paulina went to the bathroom and MJ and Destiny followed her or followed each other. What's going on? What is the chitter chatter about? Everybody's watching the same thing go down. All of this looks weird. Like I said before, Destiny, she's always asserting herself in some ish. 
and then crying about it later. Paulina says that she was fine. And you can hear Destiny talking to her, telling her, you know, how this is all sad and that she feels bad for Paulina. You know, I feel bad for you, Paulina, because it's like it's so it sucks that you can't say anything. You know, you have to be quiet. What the hell are you talking about, Destiny? Why are you? The girl just went to go use the bathroom. She's been drinking since she got there. She probably was drinking prior to. You know liquor run through you. She just went to use the bathroom. She wasn't crying. She wasn't sobbing. But, of course, you get up and run behind her. How do you think that looks? Destiny, you know, Destiny knows exactly what she's doing. She knows exactly what she's doing. So, again, Mike is annoyed because he's wondering what's going on. So they start to play this stupid game, right, because it's a party, okay? So there's cards with questions, statements, you know, who's most likely to, what if this, what if that. So first card, who is most likely to have a baby and get married next? That's what's on the card. MJ says Mike and Paulina. And then she says, you know, I hope it's you guys. You know, I hope you guys are next. You know, here go Destiny's annoying ass. No, 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 I hope not. No. Now remember, Destiny knows what Paulina told her regarding Mike and Mike texting other girls. Mike is not stupid. He knows that Paulina talks to his friends. So Destiny's basically using what she knows as a weapon, being passive aggressive. So Mike is observing this, right? A lot, everybody's at the table. Rez is not saying much of anything. All right, him and, him and Mike are still at odds. I get it. But when has Rez missed the opportunity to open his big mouth, right? Anywho. Um, who is most likely to have high credit card debt in this group? That's the next question on the card. What kind of question is that? Now, this is not a box of cards that was ordered from like a game store and delivered. These are obviously cards that were printed out, printed up for this specific reason, for this game. Who is most likely to have high credit card debt in this group? So someone asked Mike if he had credit card debt. Mike knows what's going on. Mike, he's, these are his friends. He know how shady they are. Mike's like, nah, nah, nope, 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 nope. But again, Mike, he recognizes what's going on. He's annoyed. He's not having it. He feels the tension. And I, at this point, I'm just waiting for Mike to pop off. I'm just waiting for him to pop off. Next card. Who is most likely to marry for money? Now Mike is participating and he asks Adam, what did he have before he got with Reza? I start clapping. I say, yes, Mike, read him and his kilt. Read Adam. See, it's all fun and games when y'all was poking at Mike and laughing at him. But when Mike claps back, all of a sudden, everybody wants to be offended. Adam's like, I, what do you mean? I, ha I had money before I ran out. Why are you getting offended? It's just a game, right? <laughs> there here go destiny stop taking everything so personal why destiny what do you mean personal why are you inserting yourself in what mike was asking adam reza didn't even insert himself reza was like all right next question did y'all notice that reza kept saying let's move it along next question as if he already knew what were what was on these cards See, see, Reza, you could fool some of the you could fool some of the audience who hasn't been watching you since season one, episode one. I know your works. I know your works. Next question: Who is most likely to swindle money in a Ponzi scheme? Reza responds immediately, saying, "Mike, Destiny and her extra behind gets up laughing with all her tonsils. Mind you, no one else was laughing. Reza was giggling a little bit, but no one was laughing. She's like." Ah, 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 ah tonsils out she stands up she's pointing at mike so this wasn't this wasn't planned none of this was planned huh none of this was orchestrated y'all making this so obvious mike calls them all lame and i agree with mike i agree that these cards are lame these whoever came up with these questions are lame and these questions are not they don't seem innocent just like mike said in his confessional i agree they don't seem in innocent I feel like this is Destiny's doing, but she's not alone because, you know, she wants to stick up for Paulina, you know, without saying anything about their conversation. Passive aggressive BS, just like I said before. So Mike, he accuses Reza of writing the questions. He says, um, he was like, this is your print. I can tell this is, this is you. You came up with these questions. 
Of course, Reza's like, I'm not doing anything. When have you ever seen Reza so calm, collected, and quiet? Nah, Reza. You got a new you got a new do girl. And her name is Destiny Rose. Destiny, she jumps in. No, actually, I, I wrote them. Let me tell you something. Reza wrote those damn questions. You hear me? He did the same BS. Let me take you down memory lane to Gigi. Okay, remember he came up with these these fake text messages, fake letters. He did the same thing to uh to to uh to Gigi. And again, Destiny is so far up Reza's behind, she'll do and say anything to remain up and around Reza's behind. And as the night goes on, minutes pass, Destiny, she just won't shut up. You know, telling Mike, oh, I'll pray for you. And Mike calls her a liar. Then Destiny starts going back and forth with Mike. Then Destiny says that Mike is scared to let Paulina talk to her. Wh what does that have to do with anything? Why you, you know what Paulina does? Destiny made herself look stupid and it's going to get worse. Paulina excuses herself. She gets up while Mike and Destiny are arguing. Why are you sticking up for Paulina? Paulina gets her ass up and walks back in the house. Mike gets up to leave and Destiny demands him to get out because Mike said that, you know, uh, he would buy and sell Paulina. Now they're hurling insults at each other, right? Destiny hurled insults about Mike's living situation, about Mike, Mike's financial situation. Mike said, please, you can't afford me, please. Destiny keeps going, talking about, please, you live in a one bedroom apartment. I live in a house. He said, girl, I will buy and sell you. That set Destiny off. What? And she starts doing the most and acting a plum fool. Mike, he says that Reza is feeding Destiny information. And Reza says that he's innocent. Of course, of course Reza is feeding Destiny information. Because like Mike said, how is it that she knows some of these things? <laughs> like I said, Reza found himself a new dude girl. And her name is Destiny. Because where is she getting this information from? Destiny made herself look stupid. She was getting up. You know, I, like I said, I, I know Reza, man. This is this has Reza written all freaking over it. So Destiny, she starts shoving Mike and yelling Mike. And she grabs Mike's, um, I guess his man bag, whatever the heck it is. And Mike is trying to pull away, like pull away from her and pull his bag away from her. And while he's doing that, Reza starts screaming Mike's name. Like he's in a horror movie. Let me tell you something. I know exactly why Reza was screaming. Like, mind you, he's seated. He's seated. Okay, I forgot. I think Gigi was pulling um, Destiny back. Destiny was putting her hands on Mike, shoving Mike. Mike was getting up. Mike said, I'm going to stay right here until my girl comes out. She went in the house. Mike was like, I'm getting ready to leave. Destiny kept putting her hands on him, shoving him, shoving him. Reza's like, Mike, Mike. He's screaming. Yeah, because they're gonna they're I know I see I see what they're doing. And I feel like the reason why Reza was seated screaming Mike's name like that is because they're gonna try to make it seem like Mike put his hands on on Destiny. And I'm telling you, if they spin it to make it seem like that, then all of y'all are trash. Every last one of y'all are trash. I said what I said. I rewound, re rewound, rewinded, whatever. I pressed rewind and I watched the scene twice. And Destiny was shoving Mike out of the way. You were hurling insults in the minute he was leaving. And he walked past you and said, I'll buy and sell you, please. Destiny got up, followed him into the house when he was going to look for Paulina to leave. Shoving him, shoving him, pushing him. He comes back out to say what he has to say to Reza. She's shoving him, shoving him, shoving him. And London had to kind of like, you know, escort him, escort him out. And Paulina's like, what the heck happened? What's going on? Destiny, you stupid. You put your hands on Mike. Mike didn't put his hands on you. So when Reza starts screaming like that, I immediately I immediately know what that's all about. That Karen-ish. Now y'all going to try to spin it to make it seem like Mike like putting his hands on people. As they were driving off, Paulina and Mike, Mike said, don't say anything until we get home. And I saw on Twitter some people were saying like, oh, Mike is so controlling. He's telling Paulina not to say anything. First of all, Paulina, you need to not say anything. You shouldn't have been going around telling this whole group all of your problems with Mike. If you have a problem with it, leave. 
Otherwise, you're doing nothing but creating chaos and you're making you're manipulating people by trying to make people feel sorry for you. Secondly, the reason why Mike said that is because they still have their microphones on while they're in the car. The same way Nene or Candy or whoever it was saying, I'm mic'd, I'm mic'd. So basically watch what you say. Because Mike is trying to figure out what the hell is going on. Why does Destiny feel so justified to attack me as it pertains to you? And again, what did Paulina do? She got up and excused herself when, and let Destiny fight her fight. Do I believe that Reza was behind these questions and these cards? Absolutely. Absolutely. This was payback. Payback. I feel like, oh, Destiny, you are so annoying. Like I said, notice how Reza was so quiet during all of this. Destiny, girl, you played yourself. And when, not if, but when Reza slides your behind under the bus, don't you sit on that couch. Don't you sit on that couch at the reunion and start crying. Don't you do it because I am not going to feel sorry for you whatsoever. So, Royal Family, that's all I got. Ain't got no more. I do not like the direction that this is going if they're going to try to spin it spin it to make it seem like Mike is, you know, was hands on. I don't, I don't, I don't, pl I don't like that. I don't like that false accusation, fake victim. I don't like none of it. I don't care who it is. Pauline, I mean, not Paulina. Destiny, uh, we understand that it is your house. If you wanted Mike to leave, Mike was not against leaving. He was waiting for Paulina, who you're defending, who left you there to defend her. It makes me wonder, is Paulina telling the truth? She probably is telling the truth about Mike. But why is she so adamant about telling their business? And then don't say anything. Don't say anything. Mm-mm. Mm -mm. Well, they're still together, so last I checked, they're still together. It is what it is. But this has been another episode of The Shaws of Sunset. This was episode six of season nine. Let me tell you something. Y'all on episode six, and y'all are doing the damn thing. I am here for it. Not one episode has been boring since the season premiere. So kudos to Shaws of Sunset. And like I said, if y'all try to spin this to make it seem like, you know, Mike is a hands-on kind of guy, if you know what I mean, straight trash i'm signing off i said what i said and as always until next time folks peace